Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start at the very least on my review of Empire of the Sun by J.G. Ballard. Uh, I've been, been, been becoming more and more of a Ballard fan recently, uh, and I think this is probably one of his best known works. It's certainly, I think, his most serious. There's a quote on the front from The Guardian saying, the best British novel about the Second World War. I do like war books. Um, I'm currently, at the time of filming, I'm, I'm like 80 pages in or something, so I'm going to do this almost like a reading vlog. Uh, we'll see how we get along, but I'm going to start by reading you the blurb, then I'm going to go through and check out some tabs, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, Dane reads. Based on J.G. Ballard's own childhood, Empire of the Sun is the extraordinary account of a boy's life in Japanese-occupied wartime Shanghai. A mesmerizing and hypnotically compelling novel of war, of starvation and survival, of internment camps and death marches, which blends searing honesty with an almost hallucinatory vision of a world thrown utterly out of joint. Shortlisted for the Booker Prize and the winner of both the Guardian Fiction Prize and the James Tate Black Memorial Prize, Empire of the Sun was later filmed by Steven Spielberg. Rooted as it is in the author's own disturbing experience of war, in our time. It is one of a handful of novels by which the 20th century will not only be remembered, but judged. So it's very well written. So far I haven't had a huge amount that I've wanted to tab out, but there are a few bits here and there. Just this great line here, it was not the anger of the Japanese that most disturbed Jim, but their patience. And um, this little bit, it's not quite gore, but I do like this kind of thing. Um, so we've got here, his father sat in the stream, the body of the petty officer beside him. He'd lost his spectacles and one of his shoes and the trousers of his business suit were black with oil, but he still wore his white collar and tie. In one hand, he held a yellow silk glove like those Jim had seen his mother carrying to the formal receptions at the British embassy. Looking at the glove, Jim realized that it was the complete skin from one of the petty officer's hands, boiled off the flesh in an engine room fire. Mmm, nice. Kind of making me hungry. Just thought this was an interesting mini paragraph. The Chinese enjoyed the spectacle of death, Jim had decided, as a way of reminding themselves of how precariously they were alive. They liked to be cruel for the same reason, to remind themselves of the vanity of thinking that the world was anything else. So we get a reference, basically Jim gets separated from his parents and he spends pretty much the rest of the book by himself. And for a little while he's kind of going around the city just scrounging a living, you know. Um, and he finds uh, a house of an American doctor with uh, a copy of Through the Looking Glass, a comforting world less strange than his own, which I just thought was interesting. I mean, it's a great book as well, but the idea of like the world of Alice in Wonderland being less strange than his because of war. Dark, man. I just like this, this little quote here from Basie. Words are more important, Jim. Put aside a new word every day. You never know when a word might be useful. And it kind of seems to like pale into insignificance again in this backdrop of, uh, of the war. Um, I haven't tabbed anything else out so far. I have about another 100 pages to go. I am enjoying it. I just haven't found too much that I actually want to share, I guess. My other problem is I don't tend to like books that are told from the perspective of a child, which this one definitely is. But uh, we'll see what the last hundred or so pages brings. So I thought this was a poignant line towards the end, especially because Jim has asked this a lot. He says, uh, Mr. Tullock, is the war over? Really over? Tullock seemed to have forgotten that it had ever taken place. It better be over, lad. Any time now, the next one's going to begin. And then there was some really interesting stuff towards the end. So we have an investigative spirit. Travis Elbra talks to J.G. Ballard. Um, there's some good stuff here. So he says, England interested me. It seemed to be a sort of disaster area. It was a subject and a disaster in its own right. I was interested in change, which I could see was coming in a big way. Everything from supermarkets to jet travel, television and the consumer society. I remember thinking, my God, these things will bring change to England and reveal the strange psychology of these tormented people. And he talked about how, because in real life he was in a camp, but he was there with his parents and he chose to give Jim kind of a life outside of his parents, he says. People would think that if the parents were in the camp as well, then they would be able to project, protect Jim and that he wouldn't be in any danger. And that they'd never be any danger from the Japanese, or that he would never be in any danger from himself, or from his own growing imagination. I felt that this just wasn't true, and so I decided to make him a sort of war orphan. And when asked, do you think there is a moral purpose to your fiction, he says, I'm not sure about that. I see myself more as a kind of investigator, a scout who is sent on ahead to see if the water is drinkable or not. He also lists his top 10 books, which I want to share out for you here. So uh, I'm not sure if these are in any particular order, but Moby Dick by Herman Melville, The Love One by Evelyn Woe, The Big Sleep by Raymond Chandler, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll, The Trial by Franz Kafka, The Tempest by William Shakespeare, Catch-22 by Joseph Heller, Our Man in Havana by Graham Greene, 1984 by George Orwell, and Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. And I have read all of those but the first three. 
And then we also have uh, The End of My War, which is kind of a little essay that he wrote himself. So here he, talk, he sort of shares his thoughts on the atomic bomb. He says, American power had saved our lives. Above all, the atomic bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Not only our lives have been spared, but those of millions of Asian civilians and, just as likely, millions of Japanese in the home islands. I find wholly baffling the widespread belief today that the dropping of the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombs was an immoral act, even possibly a war crime to rank with Nazi genocide. So yeah, overall, Empire of the Sun by J.G. Ballard. My main problem with it was just that it was told from the child's point of view, which I've just never enjoyed in fiction and I just didn't enjoy here. Uh, I do appreciate what the book was trying to set out. I don't know if I agree with The Guardian that it's the best British novel about the Second World War, even though I can't think of one off the top of my head that's better than it. You know, I'm sure there are them out there though. And I, I don't know, I found, it, I found the end notes really interesting. They were like the most interesting part of it. Other than that, it was just an okay read. Overall, I gave Empire of the Sun by J.G. Ballard a 3 point. 5 out of 5. So there we have it, that's what I made of Empire of the Sun by J.G. Ballard. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book, if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.